So you wanna learn how to do a press to handstand. Well, in this video, we are gonna teach you an awesome beginner's workout for how to do this amazing skill that eludes so many people. All that and more coming up. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hi, in case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. This is my brother, Yanni Burmeister, and we are the co-founders of Unity Gym and the co-creators of the UMS, Unify Movement System, formerly known as the FMS. And today, we are here to bring you a kick-ass press to handstand workout for beginners. This is a full workout routine designed to be done twice a week, either on a Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, or a Wednesday, Saturday. So you've got two full days of rest between so you can recover. Now, before we get into this, let's give a little shout out to one of our tribe members, Rachel, for our bit of bling that we got. Rachel's been saying that she's sending us a gift over. These are handmade jewelry, and these are awesome, Rachel. Unity gym colors and everything, very, very cool. Thank you very much. So Rachel Eastwood Stone, big shout out to you. Now, to get into this, what we're gonna talk about for the first thing, let's get down and Yanni, you can just start moving while I'm talking. I've got my little program written here to make sure that I uh, do the right stuff. So Yanni, just start on the wrist routine, please. Um, so what we're doing, there's a couple of components. Yanni's gonna be doing the wrist routine whilst I'm talking here. Now, the, what we wanna do first, whenever you do a press to handstand, you wanna warm up the wrists, warm up the shoulders, and warm up the core. Now, a warm up, a good warm up uh, has these components. You do uh, a little bit of cardiovascular training for one minute, high intensity training. We didn't do that in this video because it's really simple. You just do burpees or sprints or on a bike or whatever you wanna do. Then you're gonna mobilize the joints that you're um, about to work on. So mobility is very different to flexibility. You'll notice Yanni isn't stretching. He's taking his joints through their full range of motion. So for a press to handstand for the warm up, there's a couple of key components that you need to understand. Yanni's doing the wrist warm up in the background while I talk you through this. The first thing is for any warm up, you want to start with a minute of high intensity interval training to get the heart rate up. That's going to do a whole lot of things in the body. It basically um, lubricates the joints with synovial fluid to protect them. It, um, uh, it gets blood pumping to the muscles. It increases the rate at which muscle contractions happen, which increases your strength, all this really cool stuff. We didn't do that now because it's really simple. You can use a bike, you can use, go for a quick sprint, you can uh, do burpees, you can do squat jumps, box jumps, whatever you wanna do, something to get your heart rate up for a minute. Next is we're gonna warm up the wrists, the shoulders and the core. And the warm up, we're gonna do mobility exercises. So this is a mobility warm up Yanni's doing for the wrists. Then we're doing strengthening exercises like what Yanni's doing now. And all of this stuff can be found in our 18 minute stretching routine if you wanna know how to do this stuff properly and be taken through it as a tutorial. And then uh, once he's done the strengthening, the mobility and the strengthening for the wrists, we're gonna move into the shoulders. And then we're gonna go to the core. Then we're warmed up and then we're gonna start doing a mobility uh, start doing the workout for the press to handstand. So Gan is just finishing with his strengthening exercises and the idea of this, he's not trying to get stronger here, but he's doing exercises that tell the body I'm about to do some strength training movements. It's a completely different message for the central nervous system than stretching and flexibility and that's really, really important. You don't want to be telling the central nervous system that we're going to start stretching now because that's not what we need our wrist to do. We need our wrist to be strong. Okay, now we're going to do uh, a little bit of shoulder mobility. So Yanni's going to grab onto a band. This is our favorite shoulder mobility routine and Yanni's just going to fly through it. So he's grabbing onto the band. We always start forward because what we like is for the band to pull the shoulders back, pull them back and open them up. This is the position that most people need to work on. Most people are closed off like this. So first we start by doing small circles forward as the arms come up. Then we change the direction with the circles as the arms go down. Then we're pulsing back and forward as we come up. And then we're gonna do some really big circles. Again, you can take more time with this. When we do our warm up at Unity Gym and in the UMS program, we do this exact shoulder routine for two minutes. So we have a timer that goes on and we do five two minute blocks and we allow two minutes for this one. So Yanni's doing external rotation now and he's gonna do some internal rotation. Now he's gonna turn around and do the exact same thing, but instead of having the bands pulling him back so that he's resisting by pulling forward. Now the bands are trying to pull his arms forward and he's resisting by pulling his arms back. So what that's doing is, 
It's really switching on um, the central nervous system's ability to contract the muscles and control all of the muscles in the shoulder joint in all of the gross movement patterns. So we're not getting into every single finite movement and position that the shoulder can do, but as far as gross movement goes, so the major movements that a shoulder can do, um, we're going through all of that. So, you know, extension, flexion, all of that stuff. Okay, now we're into the actual workout. So the warm up's done, we've warmed up the, oh, Sorry, no, we've got to do the core, Yanni. So let's just go down for the core. Now we do three positions. One of them is on both sides, so it makes it four positions. Normally we do these for 15 seconds each. Yanni will just show you. So this is a hollow body hold. He's activating his um, stomach here. I can't get my fingers under his lower back. That's a perfect hollow body. Then he's gonna go on his side into the side dish. Now the goal here is that I can get my, you can't see it where you are, but I can get my hands under Yanni's scapula. He's activating his obliques here. And then he goes on his stomach into an arch body. And now what he's trying to do is straighten his arms, lift his arms up as high as he can, keep his feet together. So we're acting all the, activating the muscles in the posterior core. Then onto the other side. Okay, now again, what this is doing is, it's really, um, we're switching on, we're telling the central nervous system, I'm about to use these muscles, this is what you're gonna be doing in this workout. That's the whole idea of this warm up. plus taking the joints through their full range of motion to prepare them for the workout and reduce your risk of injury. Okay, warm up's over, now we're into the workout. So the first part of the workout for a press to handstand is, we have to uh, uh, develop flexibility in the hamstrings, okay? So this works as a double whammy. Not only does it build flexibility, but it also increases our mobility for the workout that we're about to do. So Yanni, if you just do 10 on each leg, okay? So what he's doing here is he's keeping one leg completely straight, okay? His back is in a neutral position. It even We even go into excessive extension here for this one, and he's gonna do 10 reps with a 10 second hold. So what do I mean by increasing flexibility, but also working mobility? Increasing flexibility means that over time, by doing three sets of this, so he'd, he'd normally do three sets of this, your flexibility will increase, which is your range of motion. You're increasing the flexibility of the muscle to increase the mobility in the joint. Mobility training is basically taking your body through its full range of motion um, as a warm up or at the end of a workout to either prepare the body for a workout or to solidify the flexibility training that you've just been doing. And by doing this, we're actually doing both at the same time. We're also doing loaded mobility, which means that the hamstrings are under load when they do it. So this is like a triple whammy. Where this is such a good exercise for beginners, this one. It's a really, really effective one. So, and you can see how much Yarn is struggling to balance here. That's a really important part of this, is the, the in, um, instability in the movement is something that we're working uh, to create here so that it fires the three heads of the hamstring, the semimembranosus, semitendinosus and biceps femoris, they all fire at different times so it replicates real life rather than just this old school come down like this in a controlled manner and do a hamstring stretch type way. So from here now we're onto a pancake and what I can do for, the, for a beginner as a pancake you can have your bum elevated like this, okay? So when your bum is elevated, it makes it easier if you've got tight hamstrings. And from here, we're gonna put a weight plate on our back and we're gonna come forward as far as you can go and then back up. Forward as far as you can go and then back up. So what I'm doing is I'm really trying to keep my back as straight as I can. Every two or three reps, I can point the toes Okay, and then I can pull the toes back every two or three reps. For someone at my level of flexibility, or even really, as long as you can sit on flat ground and lean forward to about here, about a 45 degree angle with a neutral spine, that's when you can do it on flat ground. And otherwise you just incrementally lower the height that your bum is off the ground. So from here, same thing, I'm just gonna work my pancake. Every set gets a little bit more flexible because I'm uh, at the end of my workout, we've all just finished our workout and my body's cooled down. I'm definitely not going to push my full range of motion because that would be dangerous for me and I haven't, I've cooled down now. But every set that you do, when you do your three sets, you'll go a little bit deeper. And on the last rep, you come down, let the weight push you down, tense your quads, tense your glutes, suck your body down onto the ground. So, um, you know, you're really pulling your chest forward. And that pancake and hamstring flexibility 
is absolutely critical to develop and to do in this order. You need to be fully warmed up in your hamstrings and your pancake before you try your press to handstand. And if you can't do a decent pancake, at least to where I got to there, it's not that a press to handstand would be impossible. If you're really, really strong, you can muscle up into it, but it's bloody hard, okay? Now we're onto the actual press to handstand workout. So the warm up's done, our hamstring uh, training to develop flexibility and to warm up the hamstrings is done. Now we're into the actual workout. And what we're gonna do is two exercises and we're gonna superset them. So Yanni, just demonstrate the full exercise. So this is what we're gonna show you in the advanced workout, which is gonna come out in two days. We're gonna do a, an intermediate workout tomorrow and then an advanced workout the next day. So this is, this is the, what you're aiming for. Beautiful. Thank you, Yanni. But now we're gonna show the beginner ones. So the knees are gonna come up, legs out, open up, and now down as slow as you can, aiming for, Yanni's just for the purpose of the video, he's going down for a couple of seconds, but you'd aim for 10 seconds. So this would be 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. That would be the aim, okay? You might only be able to do it for five seconds, so your goal would be to increase to six seconds next week and then seven seconds next week like that. Maximum of five reps when you do eccentric, so you do a five rep of that. Now, once you've done that, you would only take a 10 second break between that exercise and this one. So from here, the closer your hands go to the wall, the harder this is, okay? The further away your hands are, the easier it is, but you get to a point where you're going too far. So Yanni's gonna come up into a handstand, okay? And then from here, he's gonna put his bum on the wall, open his legs up as wide as he can, and he's just gonna practice rotating from the hips down to about there, and then he's gonna come back up and bring his legs together again. And he's just gonna do reps like that. Between three and six reps is ideal. You wanna try and get at least three reps, and more than about six reps, we probably wanna move on to something a little bit harder. You could, look, to be honest, I'll take that back. You could do up to eight, eight reps with this would be fine. But uh, a minimum of three reps, okay? Thanks, Yanni. Now, what we're working there is, Basically, when you do a press to handstand, the hardest part is getting off the ground. So when your feet are um, on the ground and it's getting from that position where your feet are on the ground up to that position that Yanni just went to there. So it's this idea of getting from here, from where I am now, up to there, that point where you lose, where you, where you get into the handstand, which I'm not getting there right now because I'm not warmed up. But the idea of that lifting off the ground is the hardest part. So what we're doing is we're teaching the pelvis how to move so that the legs that come down, as the legs come down here, we're working the, an eccentric version of the easier part of the movement. As we go into the intermediate workout, we're gonna work the full version, and then in the advanced workout, we're gonna do a full press to handstand. Now, the idea of doing these two exercises here is that we're gonna do our reps here, and what's happening is, Gravity is working against me to get my legs up. So when I'm holding here and pushing away from the bar on this exercise here that Yanni did and lifting my legs up and controlling down, it's gravity is making it harder to compress my body, to bring my knees and my chest together. And then when you go over here, your nervous system goes, oh wow, this is easier now because now gravity is making it easier to compress your body. And that's the whole idea of doing these exercises one after the other. So you're gonna do uh, up to five reps of this one, no more than a 10 second break, and then between three and eight reps of that exercise there. So you can see that bit there, what I did, that's the hardest part of a press to handstand to get off the ground. So the way that the whole idea of doing this exercise that Yanni was just doing here is we're not working the bottom part, which is the hardest part of the movement, which really takes a long time to develop. What we're doing is we're teaching the core and the central nervous system how to control that pelvic movement and how to get to that point, which 
When you do what I did just there, the whole idea is to get as quick as you can from your feet on the ground to that point that Yanni came to here. So we're teaching the central nervous system what this position is, how to balance in it, and how to go from there up to the top so that when we start to work the full press to handstand, that that's something that your body goes, ah, I understand that and I recognize how to do it. It helps with body positioning because one of the harder things about nailing a press to handstand is not over. Um, developing inertia. So when you practice that end bit nicely like that, it teaches you where to unfold to and not to overdo it so that you unstack your handstand at the top. Yeah, that's exactly right. So the idea here when you do these two movements together in your workout, we're going to do three sets of this, is that you do this one by pushing away from the bar as hard as you can because in a press to handstand you're pushing. So if you pull on the bar when you do this, it's really counterintuitive. And so you want to push away, you do your, your eccentric straddle leg raises and what that does is gravity is working against you. Here, gravity is trying to pull your legs down so you have to work to hold them up. So that builds that compression strength even better. And then when you go from that, over to here where now gravity is actually helping your legs to come down, it makes it easier and it all sort of comes together into that press to handstand. The next thing that we're going to do, so you, you'll do three sets of that and now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit on some compression strength. Yanni, are you okay for this one? So jump down, Yanni's going to get into a straddle position somewhere comfortable for him and he's going to put his finger, do the easier version so it's harder with your palms on the ground, easier with your fingers. He's going to lift his leg now 10 times, okay, that's enough, we'll just do it for the video. So when he does this, the idea is he's tensing his quads, keeping his knees straight, pointing his toes, leaning forward as far as he can and lifting that leg 10 times. The further forward he can reach, the better it is. Then we do 10 in the middle like this. Okay, and then we, then we bring the legs together and we do 30. Now, with this one, when we were learning this, we, we had to do it in sets of 10 with a five second break. Thanks, Yanni. You know, um, but the idea is you're gonna do 30 of those. And we're gonna do three sets of that. And then to finish off the workout, Yanni's going to do um, these football pikes. So from here, you wanna do this on rubber um, or, or wood, you don't want to do this on uh, AstroTurf or carpet, it, it's really slippery. So from here, Yanni's yeah, going to come up like this and then back down. Now funnily enough, everybody sees this and thinks, oh wow, what a great core workout. And it is, there is some core involved in this, but it's a lot more shoulders. What we're really trying to do is learn how to create this movement through the shoulders and then also at the same time combining the compression strength. So he's trying to keep his knees straight and he's trying to stack his um, hips, come even a little bit further. Uh, yep. Okay, so the idea is to stack those hips over the hands like that and compress the body in. Thanks, Yanni. So the compression strength on the ground, it's 10 reps on the right, 10 reps on the left, 10 reps with both legs together, then 30 reps in the middle, then give yourself about a two minute break and do three sets of that. For this one, the, compre the pike on the fit ball, you wanna do three sets of max reps. Now max reps for you might be three, might be five, might be 10, whatever it is. Just do max reps and video yourself. Make sure that if this is your hip joint here, that you come up like that, okay? Don't just sort of come up to here. And that is your press to handstand workout. It's, it would take you, if you don't mess around at all, that whole workout will probably take you 40 minutes. And um, as I said before, you do that twice a week, that's kick ass, it is seriously, a, it, for us it was, I mean we only learned how to do press to handstands, what about a year and a half ago or something like that, so in our late 30s, um, if you go back four years ago, Yanni and I were both inflexible, neither of us could do a pancake even close to what we can do now, so it's all something that we developed in our late 30s, we are not childhood gymnasts or calisthenics people, um, so yeah. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. It's been a real journey for us to be able to learn this stuff. So what we're sharing with you are methods that were created by people that have a background in strength and conditioning. So we understand periodization and the hierarchy of needs. And that's a really important thing to understand. This workout has been written in the hierarchy of needs. You need to do it in the order that we showed you. Um, anything you want to add to it, Yanni? No, I just want to try and do a press to handstand. Yeah. <laughs> okay.